In this video, we'll learn about the ideal diode and its modeling. So far, our study of electronics has focused on linear devices, such as resistors and capacitors and other passive components. Also included in this category are dependent sources, such as voltage dependent, voltage sources, voltage dependent current sources, and so on, which we've used to model amplifiers. However, a lot of important functions in electronics can only be performed by nonlinear devices, including diodes and transistors. We require these devices in order to perform waveform shaping and amplification. However, the study of nonlinear devices is a little bit more complex than that of linear devices. Beginning in this chapter with diodes, the simplest nonlinear device, We'll learn techniques that allow us to approximate and model nonlinear devices in ways that make their analysis intuitive and tractable. Let's begin by considering the idealized voltage current characteristic of a diode. Shown here is the schematic symbol of a diode. As the symbol suggests, the device is asymmetric. That is, unlike a resistor or a capacitor, the polarity with which you connect the device matters. The terminals are therefore given different names, anode on the left, cathode on the right. And we'll see that current can only flow from anode to cathode, as suggested by the arrowhead symbol. However, current cannot flow in the opposite direction. Instead, if a reverse voltage is applied, the diode acts as an open circuit, whereas when current's flowing in the forward direction, there's a zero voltage drop appears across the diode. So the result is a piecewise linear IV characteristic shown here on the right. When current's flowing in the forward direction only, zero voltage drop arises. However, current cannot flow in the reverse direction. Negative current cannot flow. Instead, a reverse voltage will build up on the diode. We can think of the device as being linear in each of its two separate regions. We call this region here on the left reverse biasing. That is, when a negative voltage V is applied, then the circuit behaves like an open circuit with no current flowing. Whereas when current's flowing in the positive direction, we see zero voltage drop. We refer to that as forward bias. And as long as we restrict ourselves to that region of the IV characteristic, the diode's behaving like a short circuit. These are idealized characteristics of the diode. We'll talk about more accurate models later. Let's see how we can analyze a circuit with a diode in it using this ideal model. Consider the simple circuit shown here with a 10 volt voltage source applied across a series combination of a one kilo ohm resistor and a diode. Now we could reduce this circuit to a simple linear circuit analysis if we could replace the diode by either of its models, either the short circuit or the open circuit. The main challenge in modeling nonlinear devices is we're not sure which model to apply. The good news is that we can, lacking any intuition, just simply choose one, try it out, and see if the resulting analysis gives rise to any result that violate our initial assumption. This is easiest seen by way of example. So first, let's consider what happens if we assume that the diode is reverse biased. Now we're not sure about it at this point, but let's go ahead and perform the analysis, making this assumption and see what happens. If we were reverse biased, then we know that we could replace the diode with an open circuit as shown here. In this case, there'd be no current flowing. And as a result, there'd be no voltage drop across the resistor. And hence, we would see a voltage of 10 volts appearing in the forward direction across the diode. However, we know that this is impossible. Since no forward voltage drop can appear across the ideal diode. Therefore, we must have made an error in our original assumption. The truth is that this diode's forward biased. 
using our ideal diode assumption. We can therefore replace it with a short circuit, as shown here. The circuit analysis from here is trivial. We can calculate the current flowing. It's simply given by Ohm's law for that resistor with a value of 1K. So we see that assuming a forward bias diode, current's flowing in the forward direction with a value of 10 milliamps. And that's consistent with our original assumption that the diode was forward biased. So this is the correct analysis using an ideal diode model. Having already analyzed the circuit on the left, we know that the diode is forward biased in this case. If we now consider what happens when we reverse the polarity of the diode, it's pretty safe to assume that the diode's now reverse biased. We can therefore perform the analysis by replacing the diode with its ideal model, reverse bias, which is an open circuit. As a result, we see zero current flowing, zero voltage drop across the resistor, hence all 10 volts is appearing in the reverse direction now across the diode. If for some reason we were unsure about this and we had accidentally assumed that the diode was forward biased, if we replaced it by its ideal model, a short circuit in that case, and followed through in the analysis, we would have seen a contradiction arise just like before and we would have known that the diode's in fact reverse biased. This brings us to this simple rectifier circuit, our first example of a practical diode circuit. It looks very much like the two examples considered before, depending on the polarity of the voltage VI applied. We can consider two cases. One, when VI is greater than zero. In such cases, the circuit reduces to precisely the case we considered before when the diode, we found the diode to be forward biased. In such cases, the diode can be replaced by a short circuit. As a result, the entire voltage VI appears across the resistor, and we can find the resulting current flow from Ohm's law. The second case of interest arises when VI is less than zero. In this case, The circuit looks very much like the example we just considered with reverse bias. That is, we saw that we can replace the diode with this idealized reverse bias model, an open circuit. In this case, there's no current flowing through the open circuit. As a result, there's no voltage drop across the resistor. So the entire voltage drop appears across the diode. Remembering that VI is less than zero in this case, we clearly see that that's a reverse voltage on the diode, which confirms our assumption that the diode is under reverse bias. So hence, whenever we're in case one, the output voltage VO will follow the input voltage VI precisely. Here again, we're in case one, because VI is greater than zero. Whenever we're in case two, we see that the output voltage VO is exactly equal to zero. So 
that's the case whenever vi is less than zero. So you end up with the red waveform shown there. It's called a rectified version of the input vi, and you see only the positive half cycles appear at the output. This can be very useful because the input voltage signal vi applied had zero DC content. However, the output voltage signal that arises at vo does have some average non-zero DC content. So therefore, circuits like this are sometimes used to create DC power supplies uh, from AC power supplies.